Hey guys, what's going on? This is your girl, Model E, and you are now tuned into episode 1117 of Talking with E. Yes, me, your girl. I hope everyone is well and maintaining and navigating through this thing called life. So I am back with another new bi-week episode. And before I go ahead and start the show, last week was a great conversation. Yeah, I had a lot of um, communication, whether it was on Twitter or it was by direct message. And and quite frankly, everybody wants to be nosy. (laughs) So when you put something out there, you know, that's when everybody starts coming in your DM. Well, hey, girl, what's going on with you? What was that podcast about? What's up with that? And I'm like, okay, where y'all been? I'm like, y'all knows it, okay? (laughs) But um, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed that episode because I did as well. Because like I said, I have some shit that I needed to get off my chest, not only with what someone said, but I'm sure they got the message. (laughs) Your girl don't care, okay? So um, thank you guys for tuning into um, another episode and make sure to follow me on Instagram at eInferencePod and on Twitter at Erica Jones with the Z on the end. And make sure you uh, follow my other podcast while I am the other half host of the Life and Love podcast with my husband, Sean, and we talk about just life, love, relationships, and just a host of other things. So make sure you tune into that every Thursday on the Got What You Need Network. And that's on YouTube at GWN Space Network. And make sure you follow us there. Subscribe to us, please. So you won't miss a thing. And also uh, on Instagram, follow us on Instagram, GWN Network. Everything has got what you need network. You guys should know that by now, okay? (laughs) So let's go ahead and start the show. So the first thing, oh, and let me remind you guys, this may not be uh, too long of a pod, but you guys know how I do. It's going to be good, okay? All right, so um, this one is about cash app, right? So If you are a woman and you go on a date with a man and he pays with a cash app card, how would you feel about that? Now, don't everybody go talking at once, but if we were back in the days, like 12, 13 years ago, it wouldn't be a problem because we were just happy to, you know, be hanging out, go out and have our man to take us somewhere, right? So now we live in a world where if a man don't have a certain standard about himself or he is not at a certain level, a lot of us don't want anything to do with him. And it's sad that we live in that type of world because a lot of us women who say that stuff, we don't have our shit together either. You know, we are down here on a total pole, but you want your man to be up here flying Flagstaff and I don't think that's fair, right? So this conversation came up and, um, you know, this woman, she went on a date, man paid with a cash app card and she flipped out. She, you know, was like, why are you paying with a cash app card? You know, you broke and all type of stuff like that. To me, in my honest opinion, it doesn't matter when your money comes, how your money comes, how you pay for things. It doesn't matter because, Cash is cash, right? Whether it's in your pocket or if it's on a card, it doesn't matter. That guy took the time out to want to wine and dine you and possibly get to know you. And you're going to make fun of him and call him broke because he brought out a cash app card. Look, I got cash app. I got Venmo. I got PayPal. (sighs) Zelle. Look. I have all those money outlets, okay? And I don't care how you pay me, just as long as you pay me. And if we are going out on the day, guess what? Baby, you probably got money in your cash app because I use my cash app for business. And I also have another part of cash app for, you know, just holding some money there 
just in case I need to send somebody something, um, you know, just things of that nature, or I send it to my son because he has a cash app. So it, it, it's many different forms of reasons why you have cash app, but the number one thing is it shouldn't matter to someone else. It shouldn't matter to the person on the passenger seat of why I have a cash app car, because as long as you are getting this meal for free or whatever we're doing, it really shouldn't be a problem. That's in my opinion. So if I was out on a date. Hell, me and my husband go out all the time. And guess what? He uses a cash app call. Everybody has a cash app call. That doesn't mean you don't have no money. You just got money in that form of place. I don't get you. I don't get some of you women. You guys make a big deal out of everything. And a lot of things don't need to be spoken about. A lot of things don't, don't even need to have a comment. You should be glad that this man is taking you somewhere. First of all, y'all saying, okay, men is broke. Men don't want to take ladies nowhere anymore. They just want to have sex. Okay. So this man decided to take you out. He used the cash app card and now you have a problem with it. He didn't even have time to ask for anything or even get to that point. So what do you want? I'm just saying some of you women out there need to rethink your life because you're thinking oh okay I have standards no you don't you are looking at the standards of others on this social media like these celebrities and stuff and even the ones who aren't celebrities you're looking at them and you're trying to you know portray your relationship on them and that's not how it is. We are our own individual person. So what works for me is not going to work for anybody else. So you have to realize what you want. You know, you have to realize what you want. So in this case, I say to this woman who went out on a date with this guy in a cash car, woman, you, you, you should be blessed that you were going somewhere with this man. And I really hope that that man was a millionaire or a thousand years. I really wish he was because you just probably missed out on your blessing because you thought he was one way because of how he paid for something. Have some dignity. We don't have, and, and I'm saying we as a woman, we don't have dignity no more. Everything is all about, it has to be seen in such a dramatic way and we, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get you guys no more. And a lot of times, you know, I am, I'm, I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of hearing it. I'm tired of going through emotions with you guys. It is stressful. And I think you guys just need to chill out, quite frankly. Okay. Now, I think I've been on that topic for mad long than what I was supposed to. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the next one. So this one. Actually, um, this one doesn't have a video, but I'm going to go ahead and read what this says. So this is a pastor and his name is Pastor Dedrick Haddon. He was facing backlash for dancing with his wife at his, remember what I say, his 50th birthday party. Okay. So Look, let me tell you something. 50, in my opinion, is still young. When I was in my 20s, you may think, okay, 50 is old. No, 50 is not old. I'm sorry. <laughs> 60 is probably the new 50 right now <laughs> at the rate that, you know, we're gone. So this man, Pastor Detrick Haddon, it was his 50th birthday party. His wife decided that she wanted to dance on her husband. So fucking what? That's his wife. He can do whatever he want to do. A lot of people take pastors and people of the church and they hold them to a certain level. And you guys almost kind of hold them as if they were God, your higher being. 
And I don't think that's fair because in actuality, they are the same people as us. So, yes. Well, it's our time. I was hot. I'm doing the podcast and boom, I, <laughs> I get some company. Sorry, sorry for interrupting. Okay, so can you make it quick, please? Yeah. Okay, make I it wanted, quick. Hurry up. I wanted to tell you if you had an Xbox, mm -hmm. if you had an Xbox, I was gonna, I was gonna tell you if you had an Xbox, I will act, I will act. Can I play you with? If you had one, no, I don't have any, so you can't play it. But you can go get your stuff over there, and then you can go ahead and head on out, sir. Thank you so much. See, when you have kids, you want eighty three percent. All right, go ahead and get it. No. All right, bye. When you have kids, it ain't about you no more. It ain't about you no more. It's not. There is no such thing as privacy. You don't get to do anything. You don't have a life, okay? So, but mm -hmm. I, I'm not telling you to don't have kids if you don't have any. They are amazing. They're beautiful. You know, some of them just don't fall the way that you want them to fall and you got to mold them, okay? <laughs> so going back to what I'm saying, um, a lot of people hold these uh church people you know pastors mothers of the church elders they hold them to a high standard and i don't think that's fair because they are the same as us you know that's like at work your supervisor right when a supervisor walks in now everybody want to act like they just wasn't at everybody that's talking okay they want to be quiet because the supervisor is here well guess what they're the same as us they just have a little bit more position, but their check still gets signed by the same person. So this man here had to actually get online and speak to y'all and tell y'all how he really felt. So I'm going to go ahead and read it to you right now. Okay. So this is from Detrick Haddon. And he said, FYI, I don't apologize for getting a little twerk from my wife for my 50th birthday. The fact that this is big news really concerns me. Whoever has a problem with it, I want you to stop crying like a baby and be mature. You can handle it because you and I both know you've done worse and seen worse. The fake outrage is nauseating. Don't make the profit come up. I've been trying to be nice. Just ask God to help you communicate to your spouse and tell them what you need in order to be happy. So my single saints, find you someone who can accommodate you. I promise when I see a post of you and your significant other dancing, I will have absolutely nothing to say, but don't stop. Get it, get it. I'm just trying to figure out who told y'all to take your love private. Talking about you gonna make somebody stumble. Well, hopefully they're stumble upon a true love and be free to express that love in public. The world needs to see your relationship with God and with your spouse. It's time. Everything and everybody else is bold. I'm going to be bold with showing my kid how much I like and love their mother. If you have a problem with that, you're not invited to the next party. The next big Dietrich and Domarella party is happening July 16th here in LA. And it's our 10 year wedding anniversary. So we'll renew our vows and dance at the night away. Yep. Quote unquote from Detrick. Well, Detrick, guess what? I will be happy to come to you and your wife's 10 year anniversary party as, you know, I just celebrated my 10 years a few months, a few months ago. So me and my husband will love to come to your party and I might twerk on my husband as well too. Now back to E's opinion. Like I say, we all need to mind our business. If the, so you guys mean to tell me if this was just a regular degula on the street, y'all wouldn't have anything to say about this. You wouldn't have nothing to say. His wife is pregnant. He loved his wife. They still have that fire in between them. I, I personally believe that the people who have an issue with this is those who don't have nobody. That's normally what it is. They are normally the people who just sitting back, who just looking at everybody else, 
go through this thing called life happily and they just sitting back looking being a bar humbug so get your life together find you somebody and you can twerk your own ass on them how about that but that's all I'm gonna say about that <laughs> okay find you somebody and it's it's a shame and it's sickening that people can't have fun just because I'm a pastor or a woman of the church I can't do this before I married my husband right um people have actually told me that I look like I was a preacher's wife and I don't know because the way that I used to dress because I used to wear long skirts and you know I was just you know a regular person and I don't know maybe they got that from that and then you know I met my husband and then he always used to say you know people used to tell him hey man you you you're gonna be a pastor like I see it in you and he was like Mm-mm. <laughs> and I'm saying I don't want to be no first lady I don't have anything against it but I just don't see myself in a light because I'm going to continue to do me I'm not going to stop doing the things that I do okay I love to drink I'm going to continue to drink okay I like smoking CBD I'm going to continue to smoke CBD <laughs> And if I want some weed every now and then, I'm going to do that too. I, I just don't see myself like stopping all that stuff. So if something like that does happen, honey, we're going to be the, the new age. Like we're going to write that old contract out and we're going to start something new because at the end of the day, we're still humans. We still got to live. So don't be putting me on no pedestal. Oh, she's a pastor's wife and she doing all that. She wearing that mind your own damn business. <laughs> yeah Ooh, honey 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 all right so speaking of money your business somebody pissed off td jakes and when i say pissed off y'all really pissed him off i want y'all to go ahead and hear hold on one second let me see y'all pissed that man off so bad Ooh. Ooh. Mm, 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 mm. Here we go. Oh, no, not that one. Hold on. See, the Jakes ain't playing with y'all like here. Y'all pissed that man off, and that ain't right. But seriously, though, pe people really need to mind their business because y'all be doing too much. And then the people who talking is the one that don't even have any kids, but then y'all got, you got so much opinions. So much opinions. Come on, internet. Don't be slow today, okay? I got some things to get off my chest again. <laughs> All right. All right, let's see. All right, it's DJ Jigs. It's coming, y'all. It's coming. Woo! Y'all enjoying this song? I know I am. Vitamin D level's gonna be right. I know this is going to get me on TikTok for sure, but here I go. If another woman tells me how to be a father, I will open my mouth and flat out scream. I, you can no more tell me how to be a father than I can tell you how to birth a baby. I don't know nothing about birthing a baby. I don't know nothing about nursing a child. You have to know what you don't know. Shut up being the teacher and just be the wife. Do you know how to be a father? Right. Not only are you not a father, most of you didn't even have a father, exactly. and yet you're an expert on but how expert. to be. Y'all better listen. <laughs> if another childless person tells me how to be a father, I'll scream. Right, look, this woman pissed him off. This is a woman who don't even have kids, okay? But she was trying to tell him how to raise his child i don't know exactly what happened but i know i can say is i show you water i'm sorry baby you really have to stop coming in here go ahead sorry. and take it go close my door and don't come back in here please sometime you just got be forced so i didn't want y'all to hear that but i felt if i didn't say that he would have kept coming in here <laughs> okay so um maybe lost my train of thought Whew, kids 
and and okay, no, I don't even go on a story. Okay, so um, some women think that they are the mom and the dad. Okay, yes, some of you may be you know single women and it didn't work out or you know or you know you had this child and you never been fully with the guy or whatever so I've kind of forced you to be um both parties a little bit and I understand that but um there are just some things that a woman can't teach a boy and I have two boys and when I pee I sit on the toilet I don't know to tell them to not sit on the toilet. I don't know that. I needed a man, someone to tell me that because I only know what I do and what I know. So as a woman who don't have any kids, you going to tell another man how to raise their kids. That's how you get hurt. That's how you get slapped in the face. You have to shut up and only talk about what you know. So women, when, when I first had my kids and someone would give me their unwanted opinions on how to raise my kids, it was such annoying to me. Yes, you can help me. You can guide me. You can tell me what worked for you. But do not put it in a perspective as this is what I have to do. This is the only way that it'll work. Because now I'm not going to listen to you. Because all kids are not the same. Everyone is not the same. We are different. So I can't stand no one telling me what to do. Especially when it comes to my kids. And you not there 24 seven with me, you ain't helping out. So why should you have this big gory opinion of what I should do? Okay. So, um, mind your business folks, mind your business and women let these men be men. Let them take care of their kids. Let them do that. Okay. All right. One last thing I want to talk to you guys about, and we're going to go ahead and kind of break it down when we're going to go on a little bit of this health segment, a little bit um, about meat and stuff. So for the past, I say about four months or so, I have not eaten any pork or um, beef steak, things of that nature. All I ate was chicken, right? And uh, seafood, of course. Um, I'm not saying that, you know, I'm going vegan or anything like that, but I do enjoy the vegan food. Um, I love all the, the plant-based diets, all those foods and stuff. Um, mushrooms, all different types of mushrooms. Um, just eating your raw fruits and veggies, um, eating at like Mediterranean restaurants, something that I would never think about going. Like I, I used to hear people talk about that all the time and I was like, nobody wants some of that. But now I want that. Give me that. I love it. Okay. I love it. And, um, it's working well. And I've took this route because I had health issues with high blood pressure, which is, I never really thought I had high blood pressure, but my doctor has, you know, she has been hounding me for about almost two years about it. So I kind of gave in and, you know, I just had a white coat syndrome. But of course, to them, they're not going to take that. They just want to give you medication and give you medication because that's their business. So, um, as, you know, as you guys have seen my YouTube page uh, following my journey through high blood pressure, you guys know that I've had a very hard time with those medications. And I've been through five medications 
not taking all five at once, but you know, one here and there, one for three months, one for four months, one for six months, one for eight months. And the whole side effect things was just brutal. My very first year, it did a bad number on me. It created a whole lot of stuff with my body that I never thought that I could have experienced with indigestion, um, acid reflux, um, anxiety here and there, um, just pains, legs, arms, um, just things of that nature. And I really didn't like myself where I was at that point. I didn't. So I had to had a conversation with myself and, and, and I thank God for my husband because he, he helped guiding me a lot through it as well. You know, he made me put my big girl panties on. It was like, this is not you, you know, you got to do something about it. So I had to learn to get out of my ways. And so I started going on YouTube and I started looking at all these, um, you know, different people who, um, who kind of inspire me, you know, to move on through my journey and also help me make the decision that I did, um, with getting off my medication. And, um, I've looked at people like in the beginning, of course, you know, you got Tabitha Brown, of course, who her, she did one like couple videos in our cars about going vegan and what she was eating. And she just like took off and, you know, so she's a very big advocate for um, vegan health. And, um, you know, I've also, you know, I, I watch a lot of doctors and stuff as well, who likes to help patients naturally um, to not be on medication and, you know, do things the right way. Because, you know, when we go to our doctor, we say, hey, doc, I want to try this naturally before you give me this pill. And it's always straight up, no, you need to take this pill because, we well, don't want you to be at risk for um, a stroke or heart attack. So, and also if you have a doctor like that, who just doesn't listen, it may be a sign for you to think about changing your doctor. But as I always say, you always have to be your own advocate for yourself, because if I wasn't never an advocate for myself, did a lot of worse uh, research and look at these people, I would probably still be taking the medication and living a half miserable life. So um, Mama D on YouTube out there, um, healthy living. She really helped me a lot. You know, she's a, a older woman, just like, well, not she's, she's a black woman <laughs> like me. And she's an older woman. And at the age of 60, she stopped taking a whole bag of medications that she had. And I'm not nearly that bad. I was just taking one. And she's been taking many and an array of things. Um, she she really helped me a lot. Um, we got um, Herbalist Kareem. Shout out to Herbalist Kareem. Um, he's a very dope guy that's giving us a lot of jewels and gems to help us out on the journey, you know, to be healthier and everything of that nature. And, um, you know, we got Dr. Bobby Price out here who is a oh, wonderful, wonderful person, somebody I would love to meet in person. I've been uh, watching him as well. And um, just, you know, all that stuff is just, um, it, it it inspires me and I learn a lot. So I, I do a lot of things for myself. You know, I cook at home, um, you know, prepare meals and one dish that I did started making that I thought nobody really wouldn't like, and it's called quinoa. And it's it's not rice; it's a grain, but it's good when you pair it with, um, you know, like kale salad or something, um, sweet potatoes, and for the meats, you can do like mushrooms. And my son really loves it. And, you know, I'll put peppers and onions in it and, you know, season it up with like cumin and stuff like that. And he really loves it. And I'm, I'm happy about that because I, I want to incorporate a lot of those healthy things in them because as kids, they eat a lot of unhealthy things. And just like now, like they go to summer camp and it's like, what do you give them to take to a summer camp? 
besides a sandwich or a Lunchable. And a Lunchable is packed with high cholesterol, high sodium, all type of stuff is in there and it's not good for them. So this year I've limited them to maybe two or three a week of Lunchables. For the rest of the week, you know, they'll take a sandwich if it's like a peanut butter and jelly or sometimes they'll take a turkey sandwich. But I also, you know, try to use stuff that's very low in sodium and don't have a lot of, you know, all that bad stuff in it. So but anyway, you guys get the drift. So my husband hates the quinoa. Matter of fact, he hates it. Ugh, don't like it. <laughs> but for the most part, um, the journey has been good and it has been working for me. Um, I see uh, a difference in my my blood pressure. And um, once I go back to the doctor in a few months and get my overall blood work, and I hope that I have a very, very clean bill of health, um, better than what it was because I can, I can feel it working. You know, I can, I can feel the detox within myself. And if anyone, you know, have any questions out there and wants to know what do I do like on the daily just to, you know, keep things going, feel free to ask me. I don't have any um, reason I have already, you know, spoken to a few people because they kind of, you know, saw something different in me. And, um, so I've been talking to some folks, so it's okay. It's okay to ask. But um, this last thing that I wanted to talk about is um, where this two California company is going to actually um, start. Um, you know what? Hold on one second. These two is is two California companies that have given been given the okay to allow restaurants and soon it's going to be in the meat market to guess what sell these um lab grown meats Meat, put really simply, is real meat that is grown from animal cells. These cells can come from a biopsy of a living animal, a fertilized egg, or a special bank of stored cells. Companies choose the cells most likely to reproduce quickly. Then, they're placed in tanks in a bath of cell food designed to give them everything they need to grow. Inside these bioreactors, the cell can change into types we normally it's eat, scary. including those that make muscle, connective tissue, and fat. And the cells multiply over and muscle over and over. After and several fat. days or weeks, the and meat is removed multiply. from the tanks to and be shaped into, into cutlets, meat. hot dogs, nuggets, and sausages. Those are then all things it's that ready we to be cooked, served, and eaten. So our first product will be chicken fillets, um, but we are working on an entire portfolio first of chicken, chicken um, and then following that will be beef and other species as well. The U.S. Other approved species. the sale of lab-grown meat made from animal cells <laughs> for the first time. Oh, oh, what is it? it? We spoke with the she said other company. species. So these two companies has been given the okay to go ahead and start doing um, lab growing meats. And as you can see, is they um, take the cells from chicken and, you know, later on, they multiply into many cells, connect tissues and everything like that. And then boom, we got a piece of hamburger meat. That right there scares me. And that that's, you know, another reason why I'm like, you know what, I may not be doing this meat thing for too long. So I might just soon later on, I'm just going to probably throw away chicken and continue, you know, with my, my fish and my shrimp for a while. And then who knows, I'm, I might be out the door. I may be in a whole different category from everybody else because it's scary out there with our food. It's very scary. So, um, you know, what I'm saying to you guys is just, you know, be careful with what you eat, how you eat it, because you must know that what you put in your body, that what comes out of your body. <laughs> so, yeah, so I just wanted to give you guys that bit of information because these people are very excited to do this experiment and to experiment on us with these things and I don't want to be in that number I don't because 
just think of all the, like I say, the blood pressure, the high cholesterol that we have going on and, you know, our whole body cell functions and everything like that. And a lot of stuff that we put in our body can take those things away from us, all those nutrients and stuff that we need. And it just, it's going to make our health decline and it's going to kill us off earlier than what we supposed to be. <laughs> so um, thank you for tuning into this bi-week ec- bi- week episode. I hope that you guys um, enjoy and, you know, kind of take heed to what I say and think about your food and everything like that. And you guys, if you can't be good, be careful. Continue to follow me on Instagram at Eat and Friends Pod and on Twitter at Erica Jones with the Z on the end. Else.